Algebra 3, Lesson 26, the question for today was, is this a difficult lesson? I don't believe it is. A lesson 26 picks up in your book on page 183. Um, the things that we're going to talk about today are the logarithmic form uh, of the exponential and logarithmic equations. So this is what you need to know, is that the exponential, yeah, you have a question? What? I didn't send it to the classroom. Let me hit pause and I'll send it to you. All right, and we're back. All right, so this is this is fairly easy. Um, basically, let's uh, let's take uh, an exponential form of an equation. Um, let's see, where we might have x. Let's say x to the y equals z. Okay, that's an exponential form. Right now, if I want to convert this to logarithmic form, okay, I start with writing the word log. The x goes down, okay, becomes a sub, okay, and then the y and z flip sides. So z comes here, y goes there, okay. So let's take an exponential equation that we already know, right? We know how it works. So let's say, for instance, 4 squared equals 16. We know that, right? Okay. So if I wanted to write this off as a log question, it would be log what? Sub 4, 16 equals 2. Okay. All right, we get that. And really, I said sub, but it's it's base. Okay. Okay, any questions? All right, so let's look at what we have up here. And the exact opposite happens when we have something in the log form, and we want to write it into exponential form. The base goes up. The number on the opposite side becomes the exponent. My other number moves, becomes the solution. Does that make sense? Great. Okay. Now, just that right there will help you. I mean, I've got kids that are taking evaluate tests and doing these kind of different tests and even smart goal tests, things like that, where they look at a log question and they think, this is impossible to solve. There's no way I can do this. Like, what, what type of rocket science are they asking me to do here? And then most of it is just being able to convert from log form to exponential or exponential to log. All right. So... If I have y equals log base 64, 4, okay, we want to write it in exponential form, that becomes what? What happens to the 64? Goes up. And what do we do with the log? Get rid of it. Okay, what, what becomes the exponent? Y. Y becomes the exponent equals 4. No, it wouldn't be a negative exponent. It would be a fraction. Okay, which does get to a question. I mean, we would actually solve for y in some instances, um, although we're not going to do that here. Okay, later on we'll have to solve for y. Okay, now we have an exponential form of the equation that we need to write in logarithmic form. So, Christian, why don't you help me out here? What uh, what do I need to write first whenever I'm converting to a log form? Okay, so we're going to write log. Okay, what is my base number? Six, okay. All right, what's the whole number? 216, and what is the solution? Three. Okay. So far, so good? All right. Now, in terms of, let's say I had uh, log base 6 to 16. Right? I didn't know what that equaled. Right? There's a couple of different options there. One, we could say uh, x to the, or 6 to the x, right? Because we don't know what that is, equals 216. Right? Yeah. Right? Would that work? Okay. And I could solve it that way. Right? And I should know what is that? That's probably what, 6 cubed? So it should be 3, because we already see that up there. Or we could probably just plug it in our calculator. All right. So a newer calculator will 
do this, right? Because if you go to math um, and you scroll down, you'll find something called log base. But mine doesn't actually have that. So if I do this right, we can write this off as a fraction, where we're going to say log 216 uh, divided by log 6, if I remember this. And I get 3. Okay, on an older calculator, what you have to do is you split it so that it's log 216 over log 6, because what that does is that it makes the base of both of them 10. Okay, and then that still gives me my 3. Okay, does that make sense? We know how to use our calculators. Okay, all right, let's keep moving here. Uh, let's see, number 3, I'll write the equation uh, 4 to the 3 halves equals 8 in logarithmic form. Lexi, you're just coming in, but I want to see what you know. Um, did you see at all how we move these different things around? Okay, so if I'm going to write this in log form, what is my base number? What's the, the lower number? The, okay, that's 4. What's the whole number? The number that goes right here. Hmm? All right, we're looking right here. Okay, so we brought the 4 down. 8. And that equals what? 3 over 2. 3 halves. Okay? So we know how to convert from logarithmic form to exponential and from exponential back to log form. Good. All right. So now we actually do want to solve. And in doing this, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and convert to exponential form whenever I can because that's how our brains tend to work, right? We don't think in terms of log. So, Emmanuel, all right, can you convert number 4 into exponential form for me? Okay, what is it? Four, okay. It's four squared equals x. All right. So what does x equal? X equals sixteen. Good, because all we had to do is, if we already knew what four squared was, sixteen equals x. Okay, we can simplify the left hand side and solve for x. So good, x equals sixteen. Okay, let's look at number five. Michael, um, help me out here. Let's change this over to exponential form. You're, you're kind of jumping a couple of steps ahead. I think that you will get there, but let's go ahead and start with just the basic first. Okay. Equal to 25 ninths. Okay, so you're absolutely right. What he said is that we're going to go ahead and make this 1 over x squared, right? Okay, 1 over x squared so that we get a positive exponent. 1 over x squared. Okay, now you could look at this in a couple of different ways. One, what does that look like to you? Looks like a proportion, correct? All right, which means I would get... I would get 9 equals what? 25x squared? <laughs> All right, in which case, right, I would want to divide by divide by 25. Okay? All right. So I got x squared equals 9/25ths square root both. So x equals, and I want to double check on this because I think, okay, so what's the square root of 9? And what's the square root of 25? 5. So the answer is x equals 3 fifths. Okay. And I'm... I'm thinking that because we square rooted the square, I don't know if it showed up in the answer key this way, but I think you've got a potential that it could be positive or negative three-fifths. 
Um, we would have to check, but yeah, I mean, because if I plug in negative three fifths and square it, right, what happens to that three fifths? It, it's a double negative, so it should be a positive or negative three fifths. Okay? Okay. All right, let's look at the next one. Uh, let's see, where are we down to? Number six. Number six. Yeah, go ahead and finish. All right, number six. Uh, let's see. Let's uh, Draven. Draven. Let's go ahead and convert this to exponential form. What do you get? Four to the x equals one sixty fourth. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, football players need to head down. Okay, so this pattern stays consistent through a lot of these questions that I've seen, okay? Is that whenever I have 4 to the x equals a fraction, um, every time that I've seen them use it in the book or on a test, this number right here, okay, is, um, how do I put this? Um is going to be this number to a power, okay? So what I'm going to do is we're going to look at this as 4 to the x equals 1 over 4 to the something power, right? So 4 to what gives me 64? Is it to the third? To the fourth? What is it? To the third. All right, so does that make sense where we're converting 64 to whatever this number is going to be to a certain power, okay? Now, it doesn't have to be 4, right? It could have been 5 and 120, you know, 1 over 125 or something like that, okay? But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move all of this up, okay? So 4 to the x equals 4 to the what? Negative third. All right, so what does x equal? Negative 3, okay, because it's, it's set equal to the exponent. Does that make sense? Okay. Did somebody say wait? No? Okay. All right. Uh, let's see, who am I coming back to? Um, Christian, come back to you. Let's see, let's look at number seven. Can you tell me what I want to do here? If we want to get into exponential form first. Okay. To the one fourth equals four. X to the one fourth equals four. Uh, let's see, let's look at this. Okay, so I want to undo the exponent here. Okay. How do I undo an exponent? Or what's the opposite of something to the one-fourth? It would be, in this case, the fourth root. Okay? Or really, to the one-fourth is the same as the fourth root of x. Because the exponent there would be one. Right? And if I took it out, I would get x to the one-fourth. Correct? Okay? So what we have is the fourth root of x equals 4, right? Okay, so what would I have to do to get rid of the fourth root? If the fourth root of something equals 4, take... I didn't even know we had a code yellow. All right, so we're going to take both sides to the fourth power to get just x. Right? If something is under a square root and equals something on the other side, I want to get rid of that square root. I square both sides. All right, so what is 4 to the fourth? 256. And so what I can do to check this is plug it back in. 
All right, what is 256 to the 1 fourth whenever I plug that in my calculator? Is it 4? All right, so do you see how these, all of these, I'm capable of checking, right? I'm capable of substituting my answer back in and making sure that I have the right answer. Does that make sense? Okay, so is there ever a reason to miss one of these on a test? No, right? I should never miss it because I should always be able to check it. Okay. All right, we're not going to do number eight. Oh, the code yellow was in elementary. All right, we're not going to do number eight. Number eight isn't addressed in your book or on a test. So sometimes the questions get thrown in here that don't have anything to do with anything. Um, so don't worry about number eight, but we will look at number nine. And number nine does change some things because you'll notice that we have these numbers that are sitting out front right the coefficient to the log and what those ultimately do is that they are the exponents to our whole numbers behind the log okay so they can be rewritten um, let's see so that you would get something like log base 3 x to the third equals log base 3 27 to the second okay Let's see all right so and whenever we see something like this also know that we can do the exact opposite we can always take these numbers and move them back out front so they can move back and forth okay all right let's see what I'm trying to do here Number nine. Okay, for this, what we can actually do is we can solve this one, right? This gives me all of my numbers right here, correct? Okay, so we can type in two log base 327, right? Especially if we have a newer calculator. Okay, so we want to see what we actually get whenever we plug in 2 log base 327. What does that equal? Anybody know? I'll give you some time. Okay, well, let's, let's pull it up here. Okay, so on an older calculator, right, this would be solved by taking um, log base, or sorry, log 27 divided by log 3. Okay, but because of this 2 out front, right, this is 2 times log base 327, so we're going to multiply it by 2. Okay, so it equals 6, correct? Okay, did anybody else get 6? One person got 6, okay? Okay, so what we're seeing now is that 3 times log base 3 x equals 6. Or wait, was it, yeah, was it 6? Six? 6, okay, all right, so we've got that. All right, so let's see, we have... If we ignore this for a second, we can change this over to exponential form, right? Okay, so let's do that. All right, that's going to give me what? 3 to the 6th equals x. Okay, well, what is 3 to the... Oh, okay, and well, and we can actually, what we could do, if we want to do this all at once is with this 3 here, remember that this is the exponent to x, right? 
So let's go ahead and put that three there. Okay, does that make sense to us? Okay, so what is three to the sixth? So 729 equals x cubed. How do I get rid of the cubed part of it? Cube root it. Okay, very good. Cube root it. What is the cube root of 729? Nine. Good. Okay, so do we know what the steps, we understand how to solve these now a little bit. Okay. Uh, let's see if I have this. Okay, number 10 is our last one. And it's definitely not, I wouldn't say it's even one of the harder ones. I would say that probably number 9 is the newest one in terms of different things that you have to do there. So pay attention to that one closely. All right, number 10. 10, Draven. Okay, let's convert that over to exponential form. 2, okay. 2 to the, to the what? Or number 10. Okay. Two to the fifth equals x. And these are by far my favorites because you really only just have to go ahead and simplify one side, right? What's two to the fifth? Thirty-two. And so thirty-two equals x. X equals thirty-two. Okay, that's our answer right there. So does that make these log questions seem a whole lot easier? I'm not saying. I mean, we'll get into more complex log questions. But if you follow the basic rules to how things move around um, and how we can convert back and forth, that makes them a lot easier. Okay, so like I said, the biggest biggest things that you need to know are just how things operate. What t what different types of things can we do? So go back and watch the video. Hopefully, you took down really good notes. All right? If you have questions, email me. Um, whatever you need to. Okay. All right, we will end it there.